All right, everyone. This week we're going to pick up right where we left off last week, in uh, in that we're going to start making this uh, pencil sketch into a uh, a color painting. All right. Now, right now it is uh, grayscale. Okay. Remember we uh, converted to grayscale uh, from the you know original that was an RGB setting, which was a color setting. Uh, and the reason we did that is because when you actually scan something in RGB, let me show you an example of that. Let's go ahead and open up the this chunk right here, this JPEG. Okay, this is RGB, see? Red, green, blue. Now if we zoom in really close, you're going to see that this gray, or what looks like gray, is also... Um, there is a lot of gray, but there's also a lot of like purples and mauves and some browns and yellows in here. Okay. Um, that's what happens when you scan uh, a pencil drawing. Okay. You got all these, all these different colors that are very subtle, but they're there. Okay. So when you, uh, convert something to grayscale, it just makes all of these colors into shades of gray. And that's what you want. Okay, and that's what we have here. Okay. Now, what we're going to do, though, is we're going to make this back into a, uh, a color document. Okay. Uh, because we're going to start adding color, but we want, the, uh, we want this uh, pencil drawing to be just that layer to just be purely black and white, which it is now. Okay, so what we want to do is we want to go to Image, Mode, and when you click on that, you've got a couple of different choices. You've got grayscale, duotone. Duotone is kind of interesting. If you click on that, it'll combine. Uh, it'll just start off with a monotone. And then you click on duotone, and it'll, uh, it'll combine two colors. In this case, cyan was the last color that I used, and white is right there. I use that for blue line stuff sometimes. Uh, or you can... Do something like this. And you've got a red basis, that sort of thing. Uh, some people actually use that with their pencil drawings to uh, to create kind of a uh, bit of a sepia tone. So if I were to click there and click here, there you've got kind of a brown. Let's make it a little bit lighter. You know, so some people will start with that as their as their pencil. Uh, as their uh, pencil sketch and do color layers on top of that. Um, not going to do that though. We're going to use uh, RGB. There. It's going to ask you if you want if you want to flatten it or not flatten it. Say don't flatten because because we want to have this left as layers. Okay. Now what we're going to do now that we've made some changes is we're going to save it again. Okay, the reason we do that is because you always want to be able to go back uh, and be able to open up different versions of it in case you make, uh, you know, if you make a mistake. So we'll just do a save as, and we're going to call this, uh, I'm just going to call this painting save one. Okay. Okay, and now it's uh, now it's saved as a, a PSD. Okay, and uh, so what we need to start doing now is start adding some color. Oh, by the way, um, this big space up here that I have on my drawing, you probably won't have on yours. Uh, this is left open for for um, you know a title, uh, a logo, you know. Publishing information, price. That's the kind of space that I have to leave open uh, on my uh, on my layouts uh, when I'm doing a you know comic cover or something like this. Okay, so anyway, back to this thing here. All right, we're going to start adding basic color now that it's RGB, and we're going to do that by adding layers. So over here in your layers palette, we've got our pencils layer, okay, uh, and going to add a new layer by just clicking the little plus sign down at the bottom. And what I'm going to do though is I'm going to, this is going to be my background color layer. So I'm going to type in background 
color. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to move it behind my pencils layer. Okay. Well, you're probably saying to yourself, well, you know, why do that? You know, well, that's because we want to have our color be underneath our pencils. Okay. So our colors don't uh, cover up our pencils so we can see what we're actually doing. Okay. So we've got our background color there, and that is literally going to be for our background color. In this case, I think what I want to do is have a uh, have it be kind of a reddish with a glow around this guy here. I'm still thinking about that. Um, okay, so let's go ahead and switch our pencils layer from normal to multiply. Okay. Remember from our previous video, when you do that, that makes it so the white is actually transparent and you can see through it. All right, so background color. Let's figure this out here. I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to start with kind of a dark reddish. And maybe, maybe I'll throw in a gradient. Okay, so let's go with... Let's go with uh, this color here. And uh, I think for the other color, we'll go with maybe a lighter, kind of an, or an orange or something like that. Okay. Now we're going to select our gradient tool. Remember here, we got our tool palette here. The gradient tool is underneath the paint bucket. So click on that. And let's see which way we're going here. Let's actually double check, double click on this here. This is our gradient editor. And this allows you to adjust how much of each color you have. Okay. As a matter of fact, I could go with a, another color here, make that a little bit lighter, almost kind of a yellow. Something like that. That way most of... Most of our color is going to be red, but then there's going to be a little transition here, like so. And let's drop that in. Oh, wrong way. Something like that. Okay, that'll work pretty good for a basic background color. Uh, I think what I might do as well is uh, toss in uh, a little bit of uh, a little bit of texture here. Okay, so. Uh, so let's go ahead and add another layer. Now you're going to want to label these things every time you add one. Uh, otherwise it gets, gets to be too uh, cumbersome. You know, if you don't have your layers labeled. So let's, uh, let's call this clouds. And I think what I'm going to do here is uh, maybe take the opacity down a bit something like that so it's semi-transparent and then let's go back to a, uh, a white here and what i'm going to do is i'm going to use a uh, going to use a specialty brush now i've got a uh, a number of brushes that i've downloaded from the, the web that actually are kind of cool um they're kind of interesting I've got some half tones. Uh, I've got uh, some. I got a pretty cool explosion brush. I got a couple of those actually. Chris Explosion Set One's got some interesting stuff in it, and something like that might work. But I've also got some sand and dust. Now that might actually be kind of interesting, uh, just adding texture. So let's try that. See what that gives us. Okay. That's actually kind of interesting. Okay, but what I'm going to do, though, is I'm going to change the color on this to a little bit of a more sandy color and then put it down here. That's a little too much.
You might have to adjust these a little bit here and there. Uh, let's take a look at this one. Oh, that's kind of interesting. Let's just a little bit of an edge there that I don't like. So what I need to do is make this maybe a little bit bigger so it fills up the entire space. Maybe something like a little bit lighter still. Of course, what happens when you've got these big things here is you, uh, it's a little harder to adjust these things. As a matter of fact, I, I need to, uh, uh, need to pause here for a second. This thing will let me. Sorry about that. I uh, had to, uh, I had to make some adjustments off screen because what happens when you use a really big brush, like I like I was playing with, uh, is that uh, it when you have a really big brush loaded, sometimes it makes it so you can't actually manipulate any other controls. So I had to actually pop out of my screen here, minimize it, and go back in. It was kind of ridiculous. Um, anyway, back to uh, back to this thing. Uh, so I was playing around with this. Yeah, I've got a little bit of a variation there, but I think what I'm going to do, though, I'm not real wild about what I have so far. So I'm just going to grab the stuff on this layer and just get rid of that, and then go back into my brushes and try a different one. Uh, let's try... Now, I like the shape of that one. Now, um, you'll notice this has a straight bottom, okay? That shouldn't be too much of a problem uh, because I'm actually going to have things uh, in the foreground that will cover up that. So let's go ahead and go ahead and click on that. Oh, yeah, that works pretty good. I kind of like that. So you can see I've got these uh, sort of... Uh, cool sort of fiery edges. Now there's a straight line up here that I'm not wild about, but I can actually fix that. Okay, so let's go ahead and make our brush um, a bit smaller again, get back to our normal size. We'll go with hard round and back down to our usual. I like to have it set at a five. Okay, so we've got that all set up. I'm gonna make it a little bit more intense there. Okay, you can see, again, the difference in color down here, but that's okay. All right, now let's go ahead and uh, do something a little bit. Let's take care of this. It's a little more interesting with this. Let's go ahead and make our eraser nice and big. Soft round. Way too big, again. Yeah, that, that should probably do it. Now, what I'm going to do, though, is I'm going to switch over to uh, to my stylus for this because my stylus is pressure sensitive. I can gently get rid of that edge, which I don't want. And actually, I can soften this up down here as well. Not that it matters. This, this will be covered up eventually, but uh, if it bothers you, you know, you can just, just cover it up. Okay, so that worked pretty good. So there we've got a little bit of texture going on in our background. Okay. Now um, I'm going to leave this as a, uh, a separate layer uh, and not merge that down into the background. So if I want to add a little more to it, I can, and I probably will. Okay. Now going back into uh, going back into the uh, the basic colors here. Let's uh, let's go ahead and uh, start adding some color flats. Okay. Now, this is where what we did last week is going to come in. Well, not last week, the week before last, the first exercise, first couple of weeks, is going to come in handy. So let's go ahead and click on Open. And we're going to grab our, our little uh, color sketch that we did the other week. 
This is this is our these are our color flats that we uh, that we used. It'll take a second to open it up. Anytime now. There it is. Okay. Now the reason I opened this up is because all of our colors are referenced right here, and that makes things way easier. That's that's why animators do it that way. Um, let's just switch this back over right here. Let's switch this to. Uh, let's go back to. Sorry, I like to reset my tools in the uh, in my most uh, most used uh, setting. Uh, okay. Um, so let's go ahead and start adding color. Uh, in this case, let's see. Arnold is not wearing his cloak. I don't have to worry about that. I guess it really doesn't matter. We'll uh, start with the figure in the foreground with Dex. So let's go ahead and grab his tunic color and his armor color. Okay, and then what we're going to do is we're just going to uh, go in and start putting in flats. Okay, now this is just the same as we did the, uh, you know, in those first uh, exercises that we did. So we want to go ahead and add a um, new layer. Now, some people like to have their uh, their various characters be on their own layers, uh, and that's you know that's okay. Um, I usually don't. Uh, it just seems a little more cumbersome. And besides, when you uh, when you get going on this thing, you're probably going to wind up having um, you know, you're gonna you're gonna want to you're, you're gonna have a bunch of different layers, and if they can't blend with each other, it's not going to be quite as seamless as you'd want. So a lot of times when I'm just doing my flats, I'll just go ahead and uh, just do all my flats on one layer. Yeah, but that's a personal choice. You know, you can do it your way if you want. So I'm just going to type in color flats. And then start in. Now remember, um, when you're doing your flats, you want to use your pencil, not your paintbrush. Okay, it'll look kind of chunky when you uh, when you put it in there but uh, the thing is though eventually you'll be blending this stuff and it'll look really cool okay all you're doing is just blocking in color right now so in this case So we're just putting in blocks of color. Then we'll use our paint bucket tool, like so. There we go. Very simple, sort of straightforward kind of thing here. Yeah, these are going to be kind of bit mappy edges, but but eventually you'll be smoothing these out and blending them and making them look pretty cool. So if you get a little sloppy with this, it's okay. You're just kind of dropping this stuff in. Whoops. That's what happens if you don't have your edges quite done. And I don't. Oh, look at that. I missed a spot right there. That little bit. And there, there's that. You've continued on down here a little bit. Drop that in there. Switch over to the blue. A little sloppy with the uh, my initial stroke there, but that's okay. Now this is pretty bright right now, but eventually it'll, uh, especially against that that gold, really stands out. But this will uh, we'll be adding highlights and shadows to this, which will really which will uh, 
really make it look different. Okay. Okay. Had to pause for a second there. Okay, back to this. So we're just putting in basic colors. As a matter of fact, even this bit through here, which is going to be darker, I'm just going to have be the, the base color for now. I can add a separate layer later on that will be the darker shade. So drop that in. A little bit off, but that's okay. And that's one of the convenient things about having the uh, a style sheet with your with your colors is that you don't have to try and find those colors way over here in this palette. If you're like me and you have uh, a lot of projects that you've done over the years, you got a lot of different colors built up, and sometimes it's good to kind of clean those out and sort those. Um, but like anything else, it's like, well, I'm going to get to it one of these days. And see, too, uh, one of the reasons you want to have your pencil sketch visible here is look at all the shading through here and all this stuff. That's all going to be done using color. Okay. So it's going to be, uh, it's going to be quite a bit different. I'm going to switch back over to the to the uh, color for the armor. Drop a little bit more in there. Well, it's little spots like that. I can just kind of just sketch it in real quick. Okay. There's that basic color there. Let's pop back over here and we'll grab his skin color. And we'll start popping that in. I'm going to zoom in fairly close here so I can get a better feel for the edges. Again, these will be uh, these will be smoothed out later on. Let's go around that. Yeah. Okay. Notice how much lighter it looks against the orange. His skin looks actually quite dark against the white of the other sheet, but against this, it looks very pale. So, drop that in there. That's going to be white. And zoom out a little bit. Back to our pencil tool. Again, we're just sketching in the outlines. There. And I'll notice, too, you're going to have different you're gonna you're gonna want to you're gonna want to uh, like flat different parts, but like in this case here, I've got these hands that are together because they're hanging out of this like big two-handed sword. So in a spot like this, I can just do those together. I have I have a tendency to uh, to want to do each little segment on its own. Uh, don't wind up making it a little more complicated than it has to be sometimes. But, you know, everybody has their own way of working and stuff. So there's that bit. Now, another thing you can do, too, if, uh, 
if the pencils are, you find them to be kind of annoying, if they're like a little too dark, uh, I've known some people that are like this, uh, you can actually change the opacity on your pencils too and make those a little bit lighter. Um, it's all a preference thing. So if I were to do that, what I would do is just, let's just finish this up right here. Whoops. Again, you can be a little bit sloppy because you're going to be blending these. Whoops. Didn't close that up. There, that little bit. There. So you can go to your pencils and you can take the opacity on these down a bit if you want. You can get a better feel for what the color is actually going to be. You know, that's at about 60%. Yeah, that'd, that'd be fine. Okay. Now back to this. Back on color flats. Grab this here. That's one part of his leg. That's the other part of his leg right there. Now what I'll probably do is I'll probably make everything just a bit larger uh, when this thing goes to press. So I'm actually over my, uh, my bleed line. Okay, but that's nothing you have to worry about at this point. Okay. I'm going to pause right here and work ahead. We're about a half an hour, and I will pick this back up when I'm a little further along. Okay? Talk to you in a bit. Anyway, uh, sorry I had to pause there for a second. Um, all right, going back to this, what we can basically do here is just we can turn the color flats off right here on this plane. Okay, and then... And this is just a time-saving thing. What you can do is just draw a line where you need this color to be. Now, this color is going to be covered up by the foreground color. It's just a quick and easy way to, to fill stuff in. So, let's do something like that. Make sure the line goes all the way across. And then hit it there. There, we've got our basic color there. We turn the Turn that back on, and we've got our color filled in. See, that's why you want to have it on a separate and lower layer, okay? And in this case here, like say in this background, what we're going to want to do, the further back you go because of, uh, you know, atmospheric uh, uh, perspective, things are going to be a little bit lighter and a little bit more blue. So what we want to do is uh, let's let's just take a light blue here and let's just make it not quite as bright a little bit more toward gray something like that and then we'll just use our pencil tool again and this back in here like so a little bit of rubble there from a uh, ruined temple sort of thing now you want to remember too that your uh, this stuff is on a different layer. Okay, so you're going to need to go all the way around that, all the way around the stuff that's on the other other layer, and then this line of color will just keep that in place. Now, I may put in a little bit, a little bit of uh, in between uh, plain color in there somewhere, but uh, but not just yet. I'm going to do the same thing over here. We'll just down to that there. Now again, you don't have to worry too much about drawing over top of the foreground figures because they're on a separate layer. Okay. Oh, and that right there was a little bit that I missed. That should be the brown. So I'm going to put my white to the background, grab that brown again, and fill this in here. All right. And it also looks like I might have missed a little, a little spot. Oh, no, that was, uh, that's not the foreground, that's the background. Okay, well, let me tell you something. This is another reason why it's kind of handy having this be like that. What you can do is take your paint bucket, drop that in there, and whoops. And 
then just make sure that you've got your head is taken care of. There. I was thinking that was part of the foreground. It's actually not. So there we've got our mountains and all that. So, okay, all except for this little temple over here, color flats are pretty much done. Um, like I said, there's going to be some variations, some changes in there as we go. Uh, there's going to be a lot more, a lot more stuff added, a lot of highlights and uh, and um, you know shadows and all that. Because eventually we're going to be able to, we're going to take this away. Okay, we're going to take this away, the pencils, and start painting. Okay, because the pencils aren't going to be there in the in the uh, final uh, final piece. Okay. Well, we're about 30 minutes, so I think that about does it. Okay, so I will catch up with you guys later.